Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We are in an extremely fast-moving period right now. Yesterday's episode was, of course, all about OpenAI's Code Red and what it meant in terms of how they were shifting priorities and trying to push forward to improve ChatGPT as well as release some new models that could help shift the narrative momentum once again. Just after I finished recording, we got more information about one of those models, which is codenamed Garlic. Sources told the information that Garlic is the result of a new pre-training run. They said that Chief Research Officer Mark Chen had recently informed staff that Garlic was performing well in internal benchmarking, compared against Google's Gemini 3 Pro and Anthropic's Opus 4.5. Coding and reasoning tasks were a particular strength. Chen said that the model improved upon OpenAI's previous best and much larger pre-trained model, GPT-4.5. Chen said that the model would be released as soon as possible, which the information interpreted as early next year, possibly as GPT-5.2 or GPT-5.5. Now, Garlic is apparently a separate model to Shallow Pete, which had been mentioned in Sam Altman's October memo, where he warned staff to expect some rough vibes after the release of Gemini 3. Altman pitched Shallow Pete as OpenAI's response to the new Google model and a way to win back momentum. Chen explained to staff that Garlic incorporates bug fixes first deployed in the Shallow Pete pre-training run suggesting that OpenAI has cleared their problems with pre-training. In a recent research note, semi-analysis claimed that OpenAI had not completed a successful full-scale training run on a new foundation model since GPT-40 in May of last year. That made Google's proclamation that Gemini 3 was an advancement in pre-training all the more impactful. If OpenAI has fixed this problem, then it paves the way for more significant advancements in the base model, rather than just relying on the reinforcement learning process. Now, while some assume that Garlic is the model set for release next week as part of OpenAI's Code Red, others are saying this isn't the case. Chris, ChatGPT21 on Twitter writes, The model releasing next week is not Garlic. Garlic will be a separate model that performs well. The truly new pre-trained model that they have deeply cooked and innovated on, which is expected to be strong across all areas, is scheduled for early 2026, roughly January to March. So for those trying to keep track at home, the rumors are that we're getting a new reasoning model next week, although it won't be the fully new pre-trained model. But separately, OpenAI has fixed their issues with pre-training and can now make further advancements on the base model, which they expect to show off early next year. I'm sure by the time that this comes out, we will have even more information. But if Gemini 3 weren't enough pressure, it increasingly appears that, at least among developers, Anthropic's Opus 4.5 was probably the most important model released in the past month. The longer people spend with this model, the more they like it. Everywhere you look, there are tweets like this one. Rishikesh writes, The more I try Opus 4.5, the more I feel like Anthropic is right about software engineering dying. It's unbelievably good. Ivan Fioravanti writes, I think Claude with Opus 4.5 can easily brute force any software engineering problem and solve it in one way or another. This model is really strong. Yassine MTB writes, The gap between Opus 4.5 and every other model is insane. Justin Schroeder writes, Honestly, Opus 4.5 feels like the biggest jump in coding models I've seen to date. It's really, really good. Stuart Cheney writes, Opus 4.5 has taken us to the next level. I can now offload 8 to 10 linear tickets at a time with no humans in the loop until after the PR is reviewed in GitHub. The step up in quality is exceptional. Pretty insane to think where this will be 12 months from now. Pietro Sherano had the simplest take. Opus 4.5 is alien tech. Now, one other story regarding Anthropic. The company has acquired developer tool startup Bun to accelerate Claude code. Bun produces a JavaScript runtime that's dramatically faster than competitors. The product is an all-in-one developer toolkit that combines runtime, package manager, bundler, and test runner. Anthropic wrote that Bun has, quote, become essential infrastructure for AI-led software engineering, helping developers build and test applications at unprecedented velocity. By bringing the Bun team on board, Anthropic hopes to work on rebuilding the developer stack with an AI-first approach. They wrote, Bun will be instrumental in helping us build the infrastructure for the next generation of software. Together, we will continue to make Claude the platform of choice for coders and anyone who relies on AI for important work. Bun will remain open source and Anthropic will continue to invest in the platform to ensure it remains a top choice. And while deal terms weren't disclosed, Anthropic did use the occasion to announce that Claude Code had reached a billion dollars in ARR. Chief Product Officer Mike Krieger writes, Claude Code reached a billion dollars in run rate revenue in only six months, and bringing the Bun team into Anthropic means we can build the infrastructure to compound that momentum and keep pace with the exponential growth in AI adoption. On the Anthropic front, the company is apparently joining the race to go public as they prepare for an IPO next year. The Financial Times reports that Anthropic has engaged lawyers and major investment banks to prepare for a 2026 IPO. The report also stated that they're in the middle of negotiating a private funding round at more than a $300 billion valuation. That round would include that $15 billion commitment from Microsoft and NVIDIA last month, 
and could see the valuation go as high as $350 billion. Anthropic offered a very non-committal statement telling the FT, it's fairly standard practice for companies operating at our scale and revenue level to effectively operate as if they are publicly traded companies. They added that no decisions had been made on whether or not to go public or timing for the IPO. Still, the news sets up a new competitive race dynamic next year, this time between OpenAI and Anthropic to list on the public markets. The Financial Times wrote, Anthropic's investors are enthusiastic about an IPO, arguing that Anthropic can seize the initiative from its larger rival OpenAI by listing first. Now, whichever order the IPOs happen in, they're likely to be the two biggest public listings in history, setting 2026 and or 2027 up to be another set of huge years for AI-driven markets. Lastly today, a big new set of model releases comes from Mistral. Mistral announced the new Mistral 3 open-source model family on Tuesday. The lineup includes updates to the small Mistral models available in 3 billion, 8 billion, and 14 billion parameter sizes. Each small model has three different variants, a base model, as well as fine-tunes for reasoning in Agentix. The smallest model can run on devices like smartphones and normal laptops. And while the small models are all very strong in their class, Mistral's new large model is also notable. Called Mistral Large 3, the model is a 675 billion parameter model that uses a mixture of experts' architecture with 41 billion active parameters. Mistral's benchmarking shows that the model is competitive with DeepSeq 3.1 and Kimi K2, outperforming slightly on reasoning and scientific knowledge, and lagging a little on coding. The large model delivers best-in-class performance for multilingual prompts outside of English and Chinese, which is one of Mistral's big focuses. The other new feature is native multimodal capabilities across the entire family. Multimodality has proven to be a very useful feature in Google's models, allowing them to apply reasoning to image analysis and use cases like transcription. And since most of the Chinese open source models have been deploying image models as a separate system, native multimodality could be a big point of differentiation for Mistral. Mistral noted that they carried out the training round on a cluster of just 3,000 NVIDIA H200s, tiny compared to the clusters operated by the leading U.S. labs, which contain over 100,000 GPUs. The big gap in the lineup is the lack of a reasoning model. That means that although Large 3 beats the Chinese non-reasoners in an apples-to-apples comparison, it falls short of the state-of-the-art performance of the Chinese reasoning models. Mistral chose to highlight their small models as a big step forward. They wrote, The next wave of AI won't be defined by sheer scale, but by ubiquity, by models small enough to run on a drone, in a car, in robots, on a phone, or a computer laptop. Speaking with VentureBeat, chief scientist and co-founder Guillaume Lampel discussed the use case for small models and how it fits with Mistral's business model. Mistral is now targeting enterprises that are experiencing failure with the large proprietary models. He said, Sometimes customers say, is there a use case where the best closed source model isn't working? If that's the case, then they're essentially stuck. There's nothing they can do. It's the best model available, and it's not working out of the box. And in those situations where those leading proprietary models are failing, Mistral is trying to deploy engineering teams to work directly with their customers. Said Lample, In more than 90% of cases, a small model can do the job, especially if it's fine-tuned. So it's not only much cheaper, but also faster, plus you have all the benefits. You don't need to worry about privacy, latency, reliability, and so on. In fact, it appears that a lot of Mistral's business is coming from companies who build agents on top of large closed source models, only to find the result is cost prohibitive. Lample said, they come back to us a couple months later because they realize we built this prototype, but it's way too slow and way too expensive. Some were disappointed with the release. AI content creator Theo writes, it's kind of sad to see the slow death of Mistral. Their new model is one, dumber than DeepSeek, two, three times more expensive than DeepSeek, and three, slower than GPT-5. Others, however, say, wait just a second. Anji Midha writes, these were trained on 3000 H200s, a practice cluster, and yet, state-of-the-art zone. Mistral's 18K GB200 cluster comes online soon. Today's releases are a warm-up for the Mistral 4 family. It'll be an interesting few months for Frontier Open models. Certainly something we will be watching here. However, for now, that is going to do it for today's headlines. Next up, the main episode.